Now that we have a text input field, it's time for us to handle an event on it. Specifically, when something changes, we want to be able to store that in internal, well, we want to store it into an into internal state. We're going to do the internal state stuff uh, later, but for right now, we want to handle the event. We want to get that data and um, and then log it out. Now, if this was in um, in just like normal JavaScript land, uh, I would add an event handler on here. So something like on change equals, and then it would be like the name of a function. That function would then take in an event. Uh, we get the target of that event, and then we would um, uh, just print that out, a console log that out. Or we can kind of do like set that up right now, but it's not going to fully work. But uh, let's let's get at least like part of the way there before we have to figure out what the next thing to do is. So let's start by creating a callback function here. So this is going to be let on change equals callback from. Uh, we're going to take in the event itself, which is going to be a type, just normal event. Well, how do I know that? If we go to the U documentation in docs, uh, concepts, HTML, and events here. Now, this might change in future versions, so be aware I'm on version 0 0.19. 0 .19. Uh, and if I just scroll down, here's a list of all the events that uh, we're interested in. And I'm particularly looking at this on change event, which tells me that it's going to be just event. If I want to do something like on click, that would be a mouse event. Okay, so I want this to be an event that actually comes in with the U prelude. Uh, then when this event happens, uh, I want to get the target. So that target equals the event dot target. Okay, that gives us an option with an event target. Now, I like this. This is going to happen every time that there's an on change on an input. Uh, we know that that's always going to have something there. Uh, it's always going to have the input element um, there. So therefore, I feel pretty safe with an unwrap here. Now I have an event target. Let's go ahead and console log this out and see what we're working, what we are working with. So we're going to set you to be the on change. When I click off, which is when the on change event fires, we now see the input element logged out. So that's actually from that log. This is that event when we get the target. But I can't get the value from this. I actually need this specific element to do that because try as I want, I can't really just get, I can get this value of, uh, and if I try to use this, It's the exact same thing. That's not really helpful. I need I need like the actual HTML input element. Uh, so if we take a look behind the scenes, we'll notice that it says that these are web sys events. So we want to go find the web sys event here. So here we are in the documentation for web sys itself. That's great, but we also need to be able to somehow convert this into a um, into like whatever we want, like the actual HTML input element. Well, let's let's continue looking at the U documentation because there's an entire section of this website that we haven't looked in, which is just down. So down here it actually shows how to cast the HTML target into an specific element. Specifically, we're looking at an HTML input element. Now, this is a uh, this is more of like a class style of struct. So we're really not paying attention to everything in this code. 
we're just specifically looking for where we get the target and then how to convert that in. Now there's this system here, so that's an uncautious change. So basically it's a, uh, gonna handle the errors in the case that there's a problem and not, not crash. Um, we're gonna live dangerously. I'm just gonna come down here to the on dangerous change. So we can see that I have this target. Uh, that's a event target. Um, we actually saw that previously where we did the event dot target and we did an unwrap. They're doing an expect, same difference. And then they're doing this unchecked into and then HTML input element. Okay, so let's see what we can get for that. So unchecked into. So come back to my code. Let's do let, um, this is gonna be a input equals target dot unchecked into, but I only have an F64 available to me here. So let's come back here and try to like understand what's going on. Well, they actually have a section here. We need Wasm Bindgen available to us to use the JS cast required to use the unchecked into. Okay, let's uh, go ahead and add in Wasm Bindgen. I'm gonna go ahead and just copy this. And we're gonna let Rust Analyzer update for us. Now at the same time, we can go find this HTML input element because we noticed that it comes from WebSys here. So let's go find HTML input element. Oh, here it is. And when I click into that, uh, there's this note here, which is incredibly important for us to, well, not miss, which is, uh, this API requires the following features to be activated, HTML input element. Uh, right away, we cannot anymore use the web sys that's been re-exported by you because they're not activating this great feature for us. We now need to do that ourselves. So we're gonna go ahead and now get web sys. And we're gonna use the same style of input that we have up here so we can activate the right feature. Not the was and bind gen, we want this specific feature. Okay, we're gonna let Rust Analyzer now handle that. And we should have everything we need to to now unchecked into. So we're gonna do an unchecked have to have to make sure that it sort of like understands what we're doing here. Unchecked. There it is. Unchecked into. Uh, we have to give it the type, so we're going to use a little bit of a TurboFetch syntax and give that HTML input element, have that brought in for us. Now this doesn't have an unwrapped because this is unchecked. So basically it's going to crash now if it's not actually an HTML input element. However, we know that this is. There is no way that this cannot be an HTML input element because we're not running this callback function on anything other than an input element. Uh, now that I have this, we're gonna take this input and we're gonna get the value. Now it's just a straight up method for value. Seems like it should be right. I'm gonna head back over to our, uh, our website here and write testing, click away, and we get testing logged out. So let's go over this really quickly again. Uh, we had to uh, look up the documentation for hand, how to handle a, an event, like what type of event was gonna come in. We learned that it was just a plain old WebSys 
event. We then use that to get the target, which is just an event target. It's not really helpful yet. So we have to then convert that into a specific element that we know we're going to get, which in this case is an HTML input element. This does mean that we're not gonna be able to create uh, extremely generic functions that can, like callback functions that can handle any type of element in there. We're gonna have to cast them into the correct ones, but that should be fine still. Uh, once we get that HTML input element, we could then get the value of it and then log that out. Now, can we do this all in one go? Like, can I just say, I want the value equal to be event.target.unwrap, uh, then I want to just do a dot checked, unchecked into, and get this, and then, uh, dot value. Let's find out. And I got that. So there is a way to keep it kind of clean. We, um, it is a multi-line here. So it's, it's not like, it's not a small like set of, of code, but I don't have to create multiple variables. So basically, once again, we get our event, we get the target, we unwrap that because that is an option. We then uncheck that and cast it into an HTML input element. And then we get the value of that. Then we can do whatever we want to stand into state. In this case, we log it out, whatever we need. Anyways, um, hopefully that is helpful and gets you started on handling events in u.rs. Uh, thank you very much. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.